a very good afternoon everybody uh, today is the final uh, session of our fourth presentation season semester four students are making presentations on comparative studies comparative literature and translation studies in the earlier slot we had presentations on comparative literature and in this slot uh, the students are going to make presentations on uh, translation studies and uh, the presentations which we are going to have uh, in this slot are to be made by daya and aditi uh, and it will be on ganesh devi's views on translation theory an indian perspective then Lata and Sneha huh, will uh, speak on A.K. Ramanujan's uh, view on, on translating a Tamil poem. And then Chandni and Kishan will speak on Tejaswini Niranjana's views in history in translation. And the last one huh, will be by Bhumika and Pina on shifting centers and emerging margins. Translation and the shaping of the modern poetic discourse in Indian poetry, which is by E.V. Ramakrishnan. Okay, so these four presentations we are going to have here. And uh, let us start with the first one. So, yes, Daya, you can start yes. your presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, let me share my screen. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we have a presentation of comparative literature and translation studies. And I am going to present about translation studies, uh, Ganesh Devi's views on Indian's pers perspective of transla translation studies. So me and Aditi both are going to present about this uh, topic. Is my screen visible? I think it is. Okay. Introduction. Uh, Ganesh Devi. Ganesh Devi is one who is looking for Indian languages. And uh, Ganesh Devi was a professor at uh, Maharaja Sayaji Rao, okay, but, uh, Maharaja Sayaji Rao University, Baroda. And he is also critic, uh, uh, thinker, editor, educate, educator, and activities, activist. And um, apart from this, uh, there are many uh, linguistic and critics who work on the Indi Indian uh, English languages. And uh, th those uh, uh, their articles are very uh, uh, useful to us in translation studies. And uh, those are Namavar Singh, Kapil Kapoor, and A.K. Singh. We can find the uh, Indian perspective of uh, translation history uh, in their articles. So what is in this article? This article is about the importance of translation in transmitting literary movement across the linguistic border, borders. And in this article, Ganesh Devi is, uh, begins this article with the perspective of Christian metaphysics and ends with the Indian metaphysics, metaphysics uh, that how the translation comes into existence according uh, to bo uh, both perspectives. Uh, various acts of tra translation include the origin of literary movements and literary traditions. Translations are widely regarded as unoriginal and aesthetic of to transla translation have received little attention. So in uh, 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 in this article, Ganesh Devi has mentioned that according to Christian Western views, translation is a very unoriginal or they believe in the idea of the other or the uh, origin. Uh, accord, uh, the article is start with the very um, quotation like translation is the wondering existence of a text in a perpetual exile because because Christian mythology is believed in fall uh, exile and wonder, wondering uh, so through that we can say that they are not believing in translation in a, in a positive way because they are uh, seeing it as a uh, as a fall or exile. Uh, Christian myth post Babel crisis. So the biblical story of Tower Babel in the book of Genesis is one of the most famous myth, myth, uh, mythological stories in the Bible. And according to that, uh, what is in this story and what is uh, how this story is related to the existence of translation according to the Western uh, metaphysics. So this, uh, according to this story, uh, the descents of Nora committed a sin after a great flood when they failed uh, to create a, a society uh, be uh, society befitting God's will. And instead of uh, creating that uh, society, they created a, a, a big tower to reach uh, into the heaven. And uh, 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 when Nora come come to know about this, uh, they, uh, he he destroyed that tower and he 
uh, and uh, com after committed uh, committing this sin uh, they uh, they said to the uh, descendants that uh, you uh, you are not able to speak any languages and if you uh, you have to uh, create a new language to understand each other and from this uh, it is believed that from this the translation of the uh, language is coming so this is the view of uh, western metaphysics uh, that Ganesh Devi has uh, at the very beginning of this article mentioned. Now, okay, in Western metaphysics, translation is an exile, a fall from the origin, and the metaphys uh, met mythical exile is a metaphorical translation, a post Babel crisis, as we have seen the story of this translation. So, no critics have. Has taken any well defined position about the exact placement of translation in literary histories because Western literary criticism provides for the guilt of translation for coming uh, into being after the original. They, they believe in the concept of the, uh, of the original and they believe that the translation is coming after the original. So, uh, according to their perspective, translation is seen as the derogatory way. Uh, and uh, in this article, Ganesh Devi has um, Ganesh Devi's views are totally opposite because he he is seeing uh, uh, translation translation as very positive way. And uh, at the end of conclusion, I will I will mention about the Indian perspective of the translation. Now, for the key argument, I would like to call Aditi. No. Let's continue with key arguments. On this article, two or three critics do arguments, and let's see the Roman Jacobson's argument. Roman, Roman Jacobson, in his essay on the linguistic of translation, proposed the threefold classification of translation. First one is those from one variable order to another verbal order within the same language system. Second one is those from one language system to another language system. And third one is those from a verbal order to another system of signs. It is, however, necessary to acknowledge that synonym within one language system can't be conceptually identical with synonym between the two different languages. Historical linguistic has some useful premise in this regard. In in order to explain linguistic language, historical linguistic employs the concept of cinematic different differential as well as that of phonetic glides, while the linguistic changes with the single lingua, linguistic changes occur more predominantly due to cinematic differentization and they also show marked phonetic glides and however the degree of such glides is more pronounced when when a new language comes its existence and uh, let's see J J Jesse Catford's uh, argument in a linguistic theory of translation. Jesse Catford gives a comprehensive declaration of theoretical formulation regarding the linguistic of translation in which he attempts to distinct several linguistic levels of uh, translation and because of translation is a linguistic act and any theory of translation must originate from linguistic according to his main premise translation is a linguistic operation operation the process of uh, replacing a text in one language for a text in another hence any theory of translation must rest on on a theory of language a general linguistic theory and next we can see about the analysis and findings and various dominance of humanistic knowledge were divided into three categories in Europe during 19th century. First one is comparative studies for Europe. Second one is Orientalism for the Orient. And third one is the anthropology for the rest of the world. And in other words, various linguistic changes with a single language and predominantly of a cinematic nature, the linguistic difference between two closely related languages are prominently phonetics. After discovery of Sanskrit by Sir William Jones, a historical linguistic in Europe depend heavily on Orientalism and for a long time afterwards, linguistic followed the path of comparative philosophy and following Sir William Jones' discovery of Sanskrit, historical linguistic in Europe became increasingly reliant on Orientalism. 
and the problems in translation study the translation problem is not just a linguistic problem it is an aesthetic and ideological problem with an important bearing on the question of literary history and uh, literary translation is not just a replica replication of a text in another verbal system of science it is a replication of an uh, ordered subsystem of science within a given language in another corresponding ordered subsystem of science within a related language like a literary text that continue belongs to their original periods and styles and also exist through successive chronological periods translation at once approximates the original and trends it the problems of, of origin has not been tackled satisfactory and uh, to conclusion i would like to call the yes thank you aditi so to conclude we can say that uh, in this uh, article at, at the conclusion of this article ganesh devi has mentioned has given a very interesting metaphor to the translation he says the translation is like a, a soul uh, and uh, as uh, as a soul passes one body to another body and uh, by passing that uh, soul does not uh, does not lose their essential significance and likewise translation if we translate from one language to another from from gujarati to english we cannot lose that essence because it is very necessary to translate one language from another comparative literature means that there are regions of significance that are shared across two related languages as well as area of significance that can never be shared and the true test either is the writer's capacity to transform to translate and to restate to revitalize the original and in that sense indian literary traditional traditions are essentially traditions of translation so translation is seen in this article very uh, positive way by ganesh dev thank you everyone Uh, yes so my question is uh, this article is started with a uh, christian myth and ends with indian view of translation so according to you uh, which way is best for looking at translation yes according to me translation we can we have to see translation in very positive way because uh, right now i am doing dissertation and for that i am using uh, this theory translation because my uh, one of my to, uh, uh, text is of which is from gujarati literature so it is very helpful translation is very helpful to me so it uh, we can take it very positively uh, as ganesh devi has taken translation uh, by indian perspective because trans uh, we cannot lose our, uh, our uh, aesthetic significance by translating translating the text so this is my view okay my question is that why william jones is uh, is known in in today's time William Jones is known in today's time for making and propagating the observation about the relationship between the Indo-European languages and while he he is studying the Sanskrit language he developed the idea idea of a common source for languages and that he, he is proved to to be his great achievement to all and for that he is known in today's time also
Is it visible? So, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Today we have a presentation on the paper Comparative Literature and Translation Translation Studies. In that, me, Sneha Gravat, and Lata Baraya is going to present uh, give a presentation on the article on translating a Tamil poem by A.K. Ramanujan. So here is the table of content, introduction, A.K. Ramanujan, abstract, abstract of article, key arguments, analysis, outcome of article, and conclusion. So let's uh, see the introduction. Uh, firstly, article start with the talk of world literature. Uh, in the beginning of the article, Ramanujan asked the one question, is that how does one translate a poem from another time, another culture, another language? Subject of this paper is not the fascinating external history of this literature, but translation, the transport of poems from classical Tamil to modern English, the hazards, the damage in a transit, the secret uh, paths, and by lucky by uh, the lucky bypasses. The uh, Ramanujan took various examples of Tamil poems that uh, he translated into English, and uh, he described difficulties that he faced during the translation. So let's uh, throw some light on the A.K. Ramanujan. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a poet, scholar, professor, translator, and playwright. His academic research uh, ranged across five languages like uh, English, Kannad, Tamil, Telugu, and Sanskrit. So Ramanujan's, uh, let's see the Ramanujan's uh, conception of translation. So Suzanne Besnet and Harish Trivedi said in, the, in uh, uh, their article that in this published work, Ramanujan reflect on a translation most of, of, often in the context of poetry and convinced of it, it is a multidimensional process in which the translator, uh, translator has to deal with his or her material, means resources and objectives uh, at a server level simultaneously. Ramanujan was uh, acutely, actually conscious that even the most uh, scruples, uh, translators' care and craftsmanship uh, cannot solve the problems of uh, uh, attempting what John Dryden in um, uh, 1618 uh, had called uh, metaphrase the method of turning author word by word and line by line from one language into another. Ramanujan developed his conception of outer and inner poetic from, uh, form from two culturally uh, incompensurate sources. On the one hand, uh, he owed the distinction in a part uh, to Noam Chomsky's uh, analysis uh, uh, of surface in deep uh, structure in a discourse and to Roman uh, Jackbone's rather different st uh, structuralist analysis of the grammar of poetry, uh, especially, uh, especially the latter's dis uh, distinction between uh, verse, uh, verse, uh, verse instance and uh, verse design. Uh, he, uh, they further said that Ramanujan also applied the di uh, distinction between outer and inner from his own practice as a scholar and a poet when in a rare and therefore frequently quoted comment. He said that English and my disciplines give me my outer forms, linguistic, material, uh, materialical, uh, logical and other such a way of shaping experience. In my first 30 years in India, my frequent visits and fleet uh, shift, my personal and professional uh, preoccupations. With Kannad, uh, with Kannad, Tamil, the classic and uh, fo uh, focal give me my substance, my inner forms, images and symbols. They are continu continuous with each other. And I not longer can tell what comes from uh, where. To a remar uh, remarkable extent, Ramanujan's different uh, differentiation between outer and uh, inner form, which he formulated in the 1960 or early 1970, paralysis in the distinction between 
फिनोटेक्स एंड जीनोटेक्स विच जुलिया क्रिस्टेवा डेवलप डेट अराउंड सेम टाइम फ्रॉम दी सेम स्ट्रक्चर लिंग्वास्टिक सोर्सिस बट विच शी डेवल deployed in a post structuralistic uh, psychoanalytical theory of signifying uh, practices uh, here is the key argument that uh, first one say uh, first one said that poetry as that which is lost in a translation even richards uh, the uh, anthropologist used to say if you translate all the european uh, arguments for uh, anthesi- uh, anthesiism into azan they, they would come to come out as arguments for a good in azan such observation certainly disabuse of uh, disabuse of the commonly uh, held notion of liter, uh, literal translation volcott argued that english uh, does not have left branching possible uh, possibilities but they are a bit abnormal hopkins and thomas's poetry the leftward syntax is uh, employed for a special poetic effects it alternates with other more normal types of english sentences in uh, tamil poetry the leftward syntax is not eccentric or uh, literary or offbeat but part of everyday natural speech uh, for further analysis i would like to call lata bare uh, yes uh, the whole article uh, is started with the question that how does one translate a poem from another time another culture and another language Uh, so uh, ak ramanujan started with uh, ak ramanujan started with the comparison of sound rhyme structure of the uh, tamil poem that he uh, wants to translated into english and uh, it is not about the uh, translating one text but it is about translation of time translation of culture translation of other language and uh, um, uh, while doing that uh, uh, it is obvious that we uh, face some problems in uh, while doing uh, this uh, so he discuss about the problems that he faced in uh, uh, translation any single poem is a part of a set a family of sets and landscape and a genre it means uh, this um, structure have their own world and we have to uh, we have to translate the uh, world of the uh, the origin in the uh, another language and while translating a tamil poem enukur nuru 203 Uh, he begins with the sound and uh, he compared the sound of tamil and uh, uh, english um, he find that the sound system of tamil is very different from english and for instance uh, old tamil has a six nasals con- uh, consonants uh, labial uh, dental alveolar alveolar um, retroflex a uh, palatal and a velar uh, velar and uh, in english it is uh, uh, different and um, how shall uh, we translate a six way system into a three way english system that uh, he is uh, discussed in uh, this article and tamil has a long and short vowels but english does not uh, it have a, a diphthongs and glyphs and uh, for example if we connect uh, it with a gujarati language uh, we um, we come to know about that uh, gujarati has a uh, 13 uh, vowels and 34 consonant and uh, in english we have uh, five vowels and 21 consonant and um, uh, while uh, doing translation the language within language becomes the second language in uh, tamil poetry further uh, he discussed that uh, while doing translation uh, we have to readjust uh, the structure of uh, the text which Uh, the text the sentence or uh, the word uh, which we are uh, doing uh, translation uh, if we take one example of uh, the uh, the sentence that ram killed ravan and if we want to translate it into gujarati uh, we have to readjust the structure of this uh, sentence because if uh, we uh, translate it uh, as it is in gujarati it becomes difficult to understand and uh, the meaning of this uh, sentence is also changed while doing translation so uh, we have to uh, add something uh, in the uh, target language because because the source language have uh, have that absence of uh, Uh, absence of this and um, while uh, adding this uh, we have to see that uh, uh, the meaning of the sentence uh, must uh, not be uh, changed and uh, there are also some uh, other words uh, 
that uh, lexicon or sem uh, se semantics that are not translated uh, uh, if we take example of gujarati and sanskrit language uh, there is a word in uh, sanskrit dharma and it is uh, um, as it is uh, spoken in gujarati as dharma so it uh, it uh, shows the limitation of uh, translation studies translation and um, uh, uh, by asking uh, the question uh, that uh, how translation can be possible or uh, uh, if there is a, uh, this kind of problems then how we can translate um, a sentence or a text or a word uh, so this is the outcome of uh, article that uh, he wants uh, he um, wants to prove here that it can be possible and uh, how it can be possible then he uh, discussed that um, the first way is universals so in it such universals this, uh, did not exist as uh, voltaire said uh, of god that if um, god is um, god is not there we have to invent them and um, this uh, in universals of structure in both signifiers and signify uh, signified are necessary fiction and uh, indispensable as ifs of our uh, fallible enterprise the another way is uh, Inter, uh, interior uh, interior sized con uh, context uh, so one is uh, translating also this kind of uh, intertextual web the meaning uh, it making web of a uh, colophon and uh, uh, comment uh, commentaries that surround and uh, contextualize the poem the another way he is discussing is uh, that uh, systematicity uh, one translate uh, not a single poem but bodies of poetry that create and contains their uh, original world it means uh, the work or the sentence have their own world and um, uh, we have to translate it system uh, systematically because the structure uh, while doing the translation if uh, there is um, if we do it uh, uh, in any way we have to uh, keep in mind that the meaning of the translation must be not uh, change and the uh, uh, last one is structural mimicry uh, if um, the structure of individual poems the unique figures they make out of all the given parts of their languages rhetoric and poetics become the point of entry so one attempt a uh, structural mimicry but uh, per, uh, phrases sequences sentences not metrical units but rhymes uh, not me, uh, me, um, morphology but uh, syntactic patterns um, uh, so uh, the last question uh, that uh, he arises is uh, 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 first he said that, uh, that um, in his article that frost said that uh, tra translation is uh, lost uh, the poetry is translation in um, poetry is lost in translation so uh, he answer uh, he wants to prove here that uh, it is not like that uh, so what he conclude is the, that uh, the translation must not only represent but represent the original uh, one works a tie off between two language and the form language from language in a double loyalty and uh, uh, he also gave a metaphor to translator is an artist on oath and uh, uh, he uh, said that uh, it is not like that uh, poetry is lost in translation but uh, he explained these things uh, by giving the example of uh, chinese emperor that they want to uh, make a tunnel uh, between the mountain um, so um, uh, uh, the emperor said that uh, the engineer said that uh, you uh, 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 do work from both side of mountain so we can um, and, uh, and this both uh, side will uh, meet in middle and um, we got a tunnel uh, but um, uh, one uh, asked the question that what if the tunnel uh, will not mean in um, meet in middle so council a uh, councilor answered that if they don't meet uh, we will uh, we will have two tunnels instead of one so uh, translation is like that if we if the uh, representation in another language is not uh, close enough but uh, still success in carrying the poem in uh, same sense uh, so we will have two poems instead of one so it is uh, it is like um, uh, we have to uh, uh, we have to put um, 
say the same meaning and the same sense that uh, uh, the original work is saying and by translating also we are saying uh, the same thing that the or original work is uh, say, uh, saying but the difference is that uh, we are using uh, different sentences different uh, words and uh, different uh, structure uh, by uh, st structure for the for uh, our uh, translation so this is the citation and thank you So my question is that how translation affects culture? Yes, uh, translation affect of uh, affect the culture uh, because the translations of any particular text is represent uh, is represent their culture. And while translation, uh, you have to translate also their uh, culture. So uh, and uh, directly or or indirectly. So by translating, you uh, you are taking them into the uh, that language. Yes, uh, my question is that can you give uh, any metaphor for a translation and we had a workshop on it also. So can you give any example? Uh, yes, uh, we can take an example of moon that uh, moon's calmness is best uh, or best translation of uh, sun's uh, light. Uh, and another example if we take uh, the Ganesh's head that um, uh, we had a myth of um, uh, Shankar and uh, uh, his son uh, Ganesh, uh, whose head is cut down by his father. And uh, the similar uh, head that they wanted to um, find for that, and they took uh, the head of elephant. So uh, uh, during translation, we have to take the the uh, word or the uh, the example that similar uh, with original one.
Yes, sir. Uh, hello everyone uh, good afternoon and uh, today i am present uh, uh, me and chandni uh, introdu uh, in introduction of history in translation uh, sitting translation history uh, post structuralism and the colonial context so let's start uh, here uh, you can see a table of content about uh, tejasvini niranjan abstract key point uh, key argument analysis example and conclusion so about uh, tejasvini niranjan uh, tejasvini niranjan is the uh, author of sitting translation history uh, post structuralism and the colonial context uh, mobilizing uh, india human music and uh, migration between india and uh, trended trended uh, and uh, music or cophilia uh, in mumbai she is a co-founder of the center of the study of culture and society of in bangalore uh, which offered in a uh, innovative inter uh, discriminant uh, uh, phd program from uh, 2000 to uh, 12 uh, during 2012 to 60 she headed the center for indian language uh, in higher education at the tata institute of social uh, science mumbai and uh, was indian language uh, advisor of uh, to wikipedia she has uh, been a visiting professor at the University Chicago uh, and uh, NC University uh, Seoul. So, and a, a fellow at the ACI uh, Research Institute, the Institute uh, the uh, activities uh, Evin Evinsons and the uh, Win Winskap calling a uh, Jew uh, burial in Germany. So here uh, abstract uh, for a while uh, now some of the most uh, urgent debates in contemporary culture and literary study have emerged out of the troubled uh, interface uh, of post structuralist theory and uh, historical studies. Uh, in it is a most basic uh, formu uh, formulation. The problem is that of articulating a radical political agenda within a deconstructive uh, framework. So for a discipline uh, like uh, literary studies, the reason the deter of which is the ana analysis of uh, representation, the critic uh, of representation coming uh, from within uh, has a uh, agenda uh, profoundly self-reflective uh, anxieties. So she wings by addressing what uh, she uh, sees as a deconstructive criticisms, failure to address the problem of colonialism as well as the neglect by translation study to ask question uh, about it is own uh, historicity. So contemporary critics of uh, representation have not extended themselves to the point of question, uh, questioning the idea of translation, of uh, representing a linguistic meaning in a uh, interlinguistic tra transfer. Here are some key points, uh, situ situation uh, translation translation as an interpolation and the question of history. So now I, I would like to call uh, for the discussion of Chan Nipandia. So in key arguments, we can see her purpose to make a modest beginning by examining the uses of translation. The rethinking of translation becomes an important task in a context where it has been used since a European enlightenment to under right practice to subju uh, subjectification is uh, especially for colonized people. Translation fiction, uh, functions as a transparent uh, presentation of something that uh, already exists, uh, although the original is actually brought into being uh, through translation. Paradoxically, uh, translation uh, also provides a place 
in history for the colonized she was therefore discussed the passions of the critic of uh, of historicism to the world undergoing decolonization given the enduring uh, nature of a hegian presentation of the non west and the model uh, of a teleological uh, history that uh, authorized them a questioning of the model could underwrite a new practice of translation uh, uh, another aspect of post structuralism that is significant for the rethinking of translation it it it's a critic to historicism which shows the genetic uh, genetic nature of traditional historiography a critic of historicism might show a uh, show us a way to de deconstructive the uh, pessimismus uh, of uh, deceitful hindus of mill and hegel her concern here not uh, of course with a alleged mis uh, misrepresentation of hindus rather i am uh, trying uh, she trying to question which uh, with holding to uh, reciprocity and uh, essentializing uh, difference uh, that uh, permits a stereotype uh, typical construction of the other conventionally translation depends on the western philosophical notion of reality representation and knowledge analysis it is the, it is in in the context uh, of this crisis that uh, tejaswini uh, tejaswini niranjana examination of the translation as a critic practice is made possible her analysis seems to am amplify the uh, elaborate the uh, possibility of the claim made by other post colonial theorist uh, like Chak uh, gayatri chakra uh, spivak and homi ke bhapa as well as feminists such as jane gallop and nancy k miller their deconstruction can be used in politically enabling ways uh, insisting that a question of the humanist or uh, uh, enlightenment models uh, of representation and translation can uh, underwrite a new practice of translation uh, reinscribing its uh, potential as a strategy of uh, res uh, res uh, resistance niranjana persuasively shows that a critic of present uh, presence can be taken of uh, its limits and yet not uh, incapacitate in the interventionist uh, critic an example uh, niranjana uh, is a uh, give an example in uh, her uh, article that niranjana cites powerful example for the post colonial context to show how translation was a significant technology of colonial domination the use of translation of uh, uh, codified hindu laws for intents are uh, revealed uh, revealed as a imperialist uh, ethics uh, to create a subju uh, subject uh, position for the colonized which would discipline and uh, regulate the lives uh, of uh, hindu subject in other words the notion of original text was itself used to fashion the native essence and uh, intents of colonialism attempt to erase history uh, and uh, jones uh, disguised uh, in a content uh, continually uh, mitigated by the necessity of british rule and the imp uh, impossibility in of given liberty of uh, to the Hin indias he brings up uh, repeatedly the in idea orientals uh, begin accustomed the uh, despotic rule in his 10th annual uh, discourse to the essential society he says that uh, the reader of uh, history could not but remark the constant effect to dystopian and uh, benumbing uh, the de debasing all the uh, faculties uh, which distinguish uh, main from the heart that uh, graces and uh, last uh, is conclusion since it is part of her argument that is problematic of the translation uh, and the writing of history are inextricable inextricably uh, bound together she would briefly to go over spivak's main points regarding the subaltern historians that uh, uh, their uh, strategies uh, used to post structuralism ideas may help us see more clearly how the notion of history and translation she will uh, she wish to reinscribe uh, are not only enabled by the post colonial critic of the historiography but might also further strengthen that critic
and here are my references. Kishanda and uh, Chandani, my question to you is that uh, what is the concern of Tejasvini uh, Niranjana to write a situa uh, situating translation? So, uh, her concern for the right situa uh, situating translation is that to explore the place of translation in contemporary Euro American uh, literary theory through a set of international reading. And uh, she argues that the deployment of translation in the colonial, uh, colonial uh, and post-colonial context shows us a way uh, of questioning some of the theoretical emphasis of the post-structuralism. Hello, my question is that for the history of a translation, what Derrida told about? Uh, yes, uh, Derrida would say about that is a uh, should aim to be uh, the kind of uh, writing that both Marx and Gu, uh, goes uh, back over the mark uh, with in you know, an undecidable stroke for this double mark uh, escapes the uh, pretense or authority of truth. So uh, renscribe re it without our uh, trim it. Good afternoon to all of you. So, uh, last presentation of the last presentation season, semester four, uh, we deal with the paper of uh, 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 comparative literature and translation, uh, translation study, in which me, uh, Pina Gondalia, and Pumika, Mahida Pumika, we deal with the uh, article of uh, Ivi Ramakrishnan, uh, Shifting Center and Emerging Margin. 
Translation and the Shaping of Modernist Poetics, Discourse in Indian Poetry. Okay. First, we uh, know about uh, know about the introduction of E.V. Ramakrishnan. E.V. Ramakrishnan is one of the well-known Indian uh, critic and poet. He he is a bilingual poet. He uh, writes in uh, English as well as in Malayalam language. Uh, he is uh, he is the author of three books of poetry, publishing each af uh, each after uh, systematical intervals of uh, fourteen years. Being elsewhere in myself, a uh, python in a snake, and uh, the term of sing new and select poems. He is also the author uh, author of a landmark book of uh, translation of modern uh, Indian poetry, uh, the free of tongues. He uh, teach English at uh, so uh, South Gujarat uh, State University at Surat. These are the uh, table content of uh, our uh, uh, discussion. Uh, first, we deal about, uh, with uh, introduction, then key points, key arguments about the book, uh, 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 which book this article taken, and uh, then a conclusion. So the uh, introduction, uh, translation uh, being looked uh, something shaped, uh, uh, something shaped Indian modernity in the language of uh, uh, Bengali, Marathi, and Malayalam, and uh, how the modernity comes uh, through uh, the translation. This article focus on. Uh, this this article examines the role of uh, played by translation in shaping a modernist poetic uh, sensibility in some of the major literary trans uh, tradition of India in the 20th century between 1950s and 1970. The center uh, the uh, chapter will exam uh, will uh, stu exam uh, study example of Bengali, Malayalam, and Marathi. To understand uh, how such a uh, translation of uh, modern uh, Western poets were used to uh, used to breach the hegemony of prevailing literary sensibility and poetic mode, uh, many uh, Indian poets such as uh, uh, Buddha Dev Bose, uh, uh, Agiya uh, Gopal Krishnan, uh, Adiga, and uh, Dilip Chitre and uh, Ayappa Panikkar were also translated translator and uh, contrib uh, contributor himself. Uh, in the context of translation, in act, a critical act of evaluation, a creative act of intervention, and a performative, uh, performative act of a legitimation in, uh, in evolving a new poetic during, uh, during the modernist phase of uh, Indian poetry. The term translation to suggest a, re a range of uh, practice from uh, critical commentary to create the uh, create of intertextual text. Uh, an essay on uh, T.S. Eliot in Bengali by uh, Sudindranath Dutt, or a sketching critic in Malayal Malayalam, uh, Malayalam, on the poetic practice of uh, Velothal Narayan, a uh, menon by Ayappa Panikar, can uh, also describe as a translation, translation writing as they have element of translation uh, embedded in them. These are the key points of uh, this article. Translation. Translation is a most uh, important key uh, point uh, in this article. Re, uh, rewritings of uh, ref, uh, reflection and uh, then modernity and modernism. Another one project of uh, modernity in India. Uh, uh, literary artistic movement. The post-colonial phase. The re, uh, reception of Western modernist discourse in uh, India. The metaphor of my, the human and the mechanical artificial inter mingle in the subsequent land, suggesting a loss of human in the urban landscape. And the context point between East and uh, West and modernity. Uh, and then uh, uh, translation enact a critical act and mythical character, a uh, figure of Gandhi, indigenous roots and roots, the public words, uh, conflict, public world conflict, and the surreal images. These are the key points of this article. Key argument. Uh, many critic uh, argument in this uh, article, and one of the question is that how are we evaluate the modernist that emerged in the post-colonial phase in India? So many critics, uh, such as uh, uh, Simon Gikandi, Suzanne Friedman, Lura Doyle, uh, Doyle and Lura Winkle and Aparna have argued that uh, the non-Western modernism are not mere uh, de uh, derivated. Uh, version of European hegemonic uh, practice. Uh, another critic, R. Sasidhar, uh, writes that 
if a european modernist was a drone between the euphoric and the uh, uh, reactive in kannada the pers uh, the precipitate uh, precipitate uh, modernist was drawn between the brahmi uh, brahmical and non brahmical just as the uh, eurofic and uh, uh, the reactive modernism uh, modernism were part of the internal dynamic of uh, uh, modernism itself so also brahmin uh, brahminical and uh, the non brahmical modernism in uh, kannada were a part of uh, a parcel of modernism that comes as a reaction to the nehruan en environment and uh, one of the uh, one of the recurring theme in a uh, sudindranath uh, Sud that that's critical essay in the primacy of the world in the necessary of the po uh, poetry he argue that the persistence of a poetry through the age in all society particularly among the unsophisticated and the primate, uh, primitive at uh, attest to its necessity and uh, another one uh, madhvekar also uh, uh, argue that malayalam poets to reject prosody in uh, favor of a rhythm uh, uh, rhythmic free verse in the sketching attack on uh, vellet narayana menon and uh, canonical figure of malayalam romantic poetry panikar uh, brought out that vellet's luck intellectual uh, uh, rigor is a uh, Uh, dubious political at attitude and uh, adherence to worn out idioms and uh, state diction this article taken from the this book indigenous imaginary and literary re uh, region modernity so for further discussion i would like to call bhumika hello good afternoon everybody Uh, as uh, pina told about this article i want to talk about uh, the book indigenous imaginary literature region and modernity uh, from which uh, this article was taken in this book uh, there are 16 uh, various articles 15 one is uh, is uh, is uh, shifting centers and emerging margins translation and the shaping of modernist poetic uh, discourse in indian poetry uh, which uh, which is uh, in our syllabus and uh, in this book indigenous imagery uh, this book argues for a redefinition of uh, humanities from a comparative perspective anchored in the regional literary traditions of india and uh, the central argument uh, is the uh, is that uh, the need uh, to re uh, reconfigure uh, epistemologies that to, do not uh, accommodate uh, the com compulsions of uh, creativity and uh, critical uh, reflection in a multi lingual new multilingual society uh, translation functions uh, throughout this volume as the telos of uh, dialogue uh, dialogic uh, interdisciplinary mode of uh, con, uh, cognition that questions the ex exclusivist uh, claims uh, of uh, eurocentric uh, formulations of the literary and uh, it also argues that the act of reading becomes an act of uh, recovery when uh, per, uh, prescriptive uh, protocols and uh, absolute uh, dic dictums are uh, subverted and uh, through an uh, intimate uh, involvement uh, with the sublimate subliminal uh, the unwritten and the inarticulate embedded in literary texts uh, and the book uh, analyzes the moral imaginaries that uh, animate the works of uh, rabindranath tagore uh, why com mohammad uh, bashir mahashweta devi amitav ghosh bal chandra Uh, nema de anand m m mukundan n s madhavan uh, aga shahid ali and uh, jean arasaniya gam as evidences of uh, revision, revisionist uh, ways of radical rethinking that can propel us in the direction of an interdisciplinary domain of comparative humanities and uh, as as the conclusion 
i want to say that uh, this language become uh, for the modernist uh, the only re reality that they could uh, relate to and uh, their moment of uh, re recognition uh, enabled by the discourses of western modernism was uh, post colonial in its uh, essence and the self re reflexive uh, movement was also made possible by the carrying across uh, of uh, not content or uh, form but an interior uh, mode of being that uh, questioned the prevailing limits of freedom uh, this this point is uh, from uh, taken uh, uh, this article so here is our uh, work cited and uh, thank you very much My question is that, uh, can you say for what the book Indigenous Imaginaries argues? Yes, Indigenous uh, Imaginaries argues for a definition of uh, humanities uh, from a comparative perspective uh, anchored with the uh, anchored with the regional literary traditions of india um, the question is that uh, uh, my question is that uh, what is importance of uh, translations in this article okay. uh, in this article as we know that uh, a translation being some uh, being looked at something uh, shaped indian modernity uh, through the uh, use of translation we comes to know about the other languages and then we comes to know about the modernity so the through the transla uh, translation how modern modernity comes into india this uh, article focus on the, that so we can say that uh, a translation is an important role to uh, 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 for an uh, important role for uh, uh, mm, uh, for bring uh, modernity in India. So. With this, we have ended our uh, this season of presentations, uh, and uh, it was well done in a way. I hope, uh, uh, though this paper is a bit difficult, uh, it's more theoretical, uh, and the articles are also a little bit tough. Uh, but I hope reading and making presentation uh, might have helped you uh, uh, in uh, getting a grasp over uh, all this research uh, articles. The purpose also was to see that you become aware that how research articles are written. It is not an easy way to comprehend. Research works are written for academicians. It is not a kind of a formal writing for laymen. It is for the academician. So it is. it has its own academic value, which makes it a little bit difficult for uh, a normal layman human being to understand or comprehend those uh, ideas but that is also uh, something to be learned uh, as a part of academic uh, writing uh, okay so uh, we end this uh, uh, session here with this uh, remark